Jesus Christ. Coronation Street and the mystery of the missing hot pot recipe. I always knew that my hidden object spiel would end here. And yet somehow it doesn't ease the pain. It's like waiting for your own execution. You don't want it to happen, but if it's going to happen, you might as well get it over with. So, Coronation Street and the mystery of the missing hot pot recipe is based on a soap opera that I don't watch. And I'm proud of that fact. I don't watch any soap operas because, no offence to the people who watch it, but they are a waste of fucking time. They're the creative equivalent of junk food, zombie shows from the get-go, that flow from one year to another, being nothing, achieving nothing, and becoming nothing as a result. I mean, how can anything that airs three episodes a week ever be good? It's just not possible. If I had to write three stories in a week, without a break, and didn't want to kill myself at the end of it, I would also write absolute still to drivel like these people, just to meet the demand. Even fucking Terry Pratchett, Charles Dickens, and William Shakespeare locked in a room together couldn't write three great stories a week for all time, until they eventually dropped dead. Given that this intellectual property has existed for well over 50 years now, a video game adaptation of some sort was bound to come along, and what could be better than a hidden object game? What a match made in heaven. The two things that I find most boring in all the known universe have finally crashed into each other and become one. If only it had sports. Now this might be a surprise, especially since the other two hidden object games were based on Agatha Christie's classic literature, but the story of this game is actually inferior to those. I know, shocking. On the back of the box it explains that Betty, who is apparently a character in the show of long standing, has written her famous hot pot recipe on a piece of paper and now wants to destroy it. I don't know why she wrote it down to begin with, but okay. You'd think she'd just take a match to it or something, which she does do in the end. Oh my god, I am so sorry. I I, I really am. I'm I'm so goddamn sorry for ruining that. I that's like ruining an end game and Game of Thrones in the same sentence. I am I'm legitimately so sorry. But yeah, she doesn't do that. Instead, she rips it up outside and the pieces of it apparently blow away in the wind. So now you have to find them, collect them, and bring them all back to piece them together and then burn them. For the record, I have no idea who you are in this game. I would say you're Betty, but nobody ever addresses the player directly. And she doesn't appear in any cutscenes. Maybe you play as multiple characters, but... I don't know how that works because why did they know to send the pieces of the hot pot recipe back to Betty? If nobody wanted to steal the recipe from her, then how is this a threat? Man, this story was going so well until now. So, before we start tearing this thing in your asshole, I did want to point out the interesting fact that my copy appears to have been stolen from Overwater Marina's DVD library. Apparently somebody didn't read this, so they didn't return it for other Moras to enjoy. Though given what this is, I think most people would probably struggle to enjoy it. Including Moras. Also, for the record, it wasn't me who stole it. I bought this thing fair and square from CEX for 50p. I'm not sure if the company sold it to CEX, or if it was stolen by someone unscrupulous. As it is marked as a DVD, it's more than possible that they bought it by mistake thinking that it was a movie and traded it in to get some of their money back. I mean, it's more than possible, I don't know at this point. It is really sad, however, that the mystery of the missing Coronation Street game is far more interesting than the titular mystery. Oh well, I'll write to them as soon as I'm done making my video on it and they can have it back if they really, really want. Though I'd highly recommend against that given that this game is, well, this. So I boot it up and immediately run into one of the game's first problems. That problem being the sound design. 
Basically, the sound design consists of two sounds. The sounds of clattering about and the Coronation Street theme on loop. On the menu, they don't have any clattering, so it's just the theme on loop. But not even the full theme, it is just the first 15 seconds of it. It's honestly god awful to hear it on a loop like that, again and again and again, and I couldn't wait to hit start just to get away from it. So, I, I've got to play it, I'm sorry, the, the fucking music's on loop. This is a constant problem with the sound as well. Like, the background noises half the time don't make any sense. And you constantly hear stomping around in the background in a room where you're backed against the wall. So I don't know who's supposed to be behind you or what or why. No, don't you fucking hum. I clipped on the duck, you dipshit. I swear to God, Ken, if you hum, I will kill that little boy and drink his blood. Do you understand? You rat fuck. <laughs> Does that make the stupid kettle sound stop? No, apparently not. What shit. And whoever's fucking around back there, stop messing with the door. I'm doing serious scalpel hunting. I found the game, why do I need to do any more of this shit? Also, whoever's idea it was to make this steaming kettle sound, which by the way you wouldn't hear in 2011, but let's not get carried away with reality here. But whoever thought that was a good sound to put on loop, I hope that you lean over a steaming kettle and burn your own fucking face off one day. Oh, <laughs> and just an aside, I think in the garage portion, somebody swears in the background. It's hard to tell because it's so blurry and messed up. I also like the simlish in the taxi uh, firm. I don't know what you call this place, I call it a taxi firm, but w whatever. They talk simlish for some reason. <laughs> So, yeah, there's that. The sound design sucks balls. The story begins with Betty telling her granddaughter, I think, the thrilling tale of the mystery of the missing hot pot recipe. Again, apparently. Not only has this girl heard this story before, but it's actually been told multiple times to her. Maybe this is like GTA 5 where you're supposed to play it on repeat and that this is for returning players. I don't know who'd come back to this fucking thing though. Regardless, this takes us back to last summer when the wallpaper was green instead of red. It might seem the case that the wallpaper changes its colour depending on the environment that it's supposed to be set in, but no, it is literally just a case of red or green. What's even more annoying is that things don't even need to be framed like this, as the cutscenes are just static .png files. Seriously, the game's cutscenes are a slideshow, with about 10 lines of code for each one. Even the opening is like this, they don't even do something like make a compressed MPEG to make it stand out and special, nope. Just five googled images of Coronation Street, that'll do for your video game opening. And yes, it does mean that this is the easiest game in existence to mod. Assuming that somebody could be bothered doing such a thing. You'll also notice that the photos that they got of the characters are just stills or stock images. I mean, one or two characters, like Norris, were worthy of having more than one picture. But the rest didn't seem worth it apparently, so... Anyway, our premise starts with Betty and Steve having bants. I'm never gonna say that again. About the hot pot recipe. And it's revealed that Betty is a fucking moron. Anyway, now the hunt is on or something. Who cares? And the game starts. Right, so, gameplay. It's the same shit as Miss Marple. Only the images are just PNG images, which is a major step down in quality, and in truth, it's more like a big jumble sale of stock images. It's 
really easy to find shit because it's like shutter stock exploded. Okay, there's no rhyme or reason as to where anything is, and everything just juts out like a sore thumb. Well, actually, to be honest, it would be, but the game tries to compensate around this. Which normally, I'd commend them for that, but they pick the most irritating way possible. I will say that aesthetically, this looks like a fucking mess. Why is there a rubber duck, a teddy bear, and a... Is that a human skull? Who runs this bar, Shao Kahn? What the fu- So like I said, they compensate by doing several things different to Miss Marple. For a start, they like to make some objects completely invisible. That helps a lot. Thanks for that, guys. It kind of reminds me of when Miss Marple had objects sort of in the background, carved into wood or just plain embedded in the background. Except it isn't like that, as spark plugs can be the size of cars and invisible at the same time. This makes it damn hard to know how big an object is, or if it'll be in a realistic place, or even if it'll be visible. Some objects just obscure whole areas of the screen, being so big when they're just simple objects like books or spanners. Of course they're invisible so you can't see, and you accidentally click on them when you just click a random part of the room. Another thing that this game does differently to Miss Marple is the clicker. In that game, clicking four times in rapid succession at one spot would trigger the whirly dirly thing, but now four clicks anywhere on the screen triggers it instead. I want to go on record and say sorry for complaining about the way Miss Marple did it, because whilst that was a pointless penalty, this is infinitely worse. It can make it bloody infuriating when you click the hint button, get the object illuminated, and then have control of the mouse taken off you because you clicked a mere pixel out of its boundary. However, in spite of all this, this game is considerably easier than Miss Marple. The first run through of this took me about four hours. It was just shy of Miss Marple. This is mainly due to objects being fucking huge most of the time, and ridiculously small the rest. I found its ineptitude a little more amusing than Miss Marple, where it took it so seriously that it was boring there. I also have to give it its due that the mini games are significantly better than Miss Marple. Instead of moving a load of .png images around some woman's bag, you instead get to play a breakout clone, play a piano, pipe dream, and even the more standard puzzles, while they aren't anything amazing, they at least act as some sort of break in the bombardment of misery that is the rest of the game. I also appreciate the faces of the characters often mirroring my own. Another thing that I found a lot more amusing is the undertones of a lot of things, like this molestry garage. They even have a sign that says, what happens in the garage stays in the garage. I'm not even going to ask. I also like this guy's face in this scene. He looks like he's got some dead guy's hand rammed firmly up his ass. It's a shame that you can't make your own fun out of every scene. Sadly, it's so fucking boring the rest of the time that it's practically impossible. I do miss the artistic strengths of Miss Marple, even though I hated that game. To the point where I would, if I had nothing else in my life, dedicate the rest of my life to destroying every copy of it. I did like the art, the sound effects and the music a lot more than this game. As mentioned before, the sound just constantly loops and it's impossible for me to determine which of the two hells is more preferable, out of sensory deprivation or a horrible choppy riff of the Coronation Street theme. I would say that fans would enjoy the game, but I find that kind of hard to believe as there's nothing that happens in this entire game. The person who wrote the dialogue clearly didn't give a shit, not that I blame them, and there's little to no tie in what's going on with the actual show. The only thing that fans may like, and I personally liked, was when I clicked on a photograph of two characters as old people, and they faded away and became the young version of themselves. I found that to be a nice touch. It had a nice sort of sentimental ring to it, which, you know, I can appreciate in a game based on an IP that's like 50 years old. It's kind of nice. Especially compared to them soulless pieces of trash that were the Agatha Christie releases. 
The real tragedy hit me whilst I was doing my audio notes, and I saw that four hours of my fucking life had gone on this game. And in truth, that thought alone depresses me. You can fast forward four hours of my life, and barely anything changes from one setting to another. That's the length of two, maybe even three great movies, or even an entire series of 20 minute episode shows in some cases, and here I am playing this fucking shit. One thing that I find about this game is it just ends so abruptly. I was skimming over my footage and noticed that I was in a butcher shop and then the game just ended. I mean, I'm kind of torn on that. On the one hand, this thing just ending is great, but it takes four hours to beat, the first time around at least, so I wanted to at least get a satisfying conclusion like everyone dying or something. But as mentioned before, they just say what they will do with the hot pot recipe, and that's basically the end of the game. It's like a constant dichotomy throughout this game. Is it good that the game is made harder? That they put that effort in? Or is it bad because the game is so bad that anything that takes longer to complete it makes it even worse? I genuinely don't know the answer to that question. Is it worthwhile writing an ending to something like this? Even if it's just a pathetic colourless dribble of cum on a copy of Alias on PS2 without much fanfare? Or is it just better to get it over with so you can go back to your life? Well, regardless, this game has taught me that life is no longer worth living. I'm going to go blow my fucking brains out now, dying happy. Knowing that those arseholes at Overwater Marina will never see their copy of Coronation Street and the missing hot pot recipe ever again.